Hello everyone and welcome back to another Be Connected session. I'm Emily, your host again for today. Um, today we're looking at socialising online and getting social and things to look out for when you're jumping online. Um, things to keep in mind today, we're going to be looking at just a handful of the most commonly used uh, social networks. Um, if you have any questions, throw them in the chat and I'll answer them. Otherwise, we'll just get started and run through um, what's the most popular and some of the features of them. Excellent, let's get started. Oh, if my button wants to work, here we go. <laughs> Excellent, so what we'll look at today. First, we'll start off with the Be Connected website as always, and we'll have a look at the content that I'll be covering on that side. Um, and then we'll jump into what makes up a social network, what makes a network social and what is it as we understand it now. Um, we'll look at why we use social networks. Um, what's the point of them? Why bother? We'll look into some very uh, convincing points. Um, and then we'll look at which is right for you, um, depending on your skill level or the amount of information you'd like to share. Um, they all offer something different. So hopefully I can bring up a few that you might be interested in. And at the end, we'll get to questions if you have any extras. Excellent. All right, Be Connected website. I plug this every time, as always, as we know. Um, it has a broad range of topics, self-paced, easy to use, and you can sign up to keep track of your training. It's an excellent web page. I recommend it to everyone. Extremely easy to use. So what I'll do, I'll just bring you over to my Google Chrome page. Here we go. So if we jump on to Be Connected, just by typing in Be Connected right into a Google search bar, um, and we'll jump on to the topic library here. And it starts from the bare essentials, figuring out what is a smartphone, what's a computer, how to type, how to use a touch screen, getting all the way through to safety, online skills, connecting with others. And today we're going to be doing, let me find where I put it. <laughs> it should be connecting. So let's have a look here. Pardon my scrolling, everyone. There it is, more online skills. So socializing online and using Facebook. So if anything, if I miss anything that you're looking forward to hearing about, please jump onto the Be Connected website, go through the more online skills, and then jump onto socializing online. And we're gonna have a look at Facebook as well. Excellent, let's jump back to my other share. Here we go, excellent. All right, so there, that's Be Connected, nothing else to add to that. And we've got the link here for you to view if you'd like. Excellent, so what is a social network? What makes it social? Why is it online? Um, so I've got a little quote here. It just says an online community where people can communicate and share information with each other. Um, so these are networks like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and even LinkedIn. I won't look at LinkedIn today only because I didn't have, wasn't able to make an example without showing you my own LinkedIn page. So um, and it's honestly not that exciting. <laughs> But things like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest are all um, very popular networks that everyone uses. Well, I, don't, I say everyone. Um, when you read the stat for Facebook, how many users there are, you'd, you'd think everyone uses it with that, uh, that very high number. But of course, it's not the case. Not everyone is on a social network. I'm just generalizing again. <laughs> okay, so um, essentially just a place where people can meet up online um, in the virtual space. So it doesn't need to be uh, with video chat or anything like that. It's any place where there are social connections happening um, and we create a social network through that. So we'll continue through and we'll ask ourselves, why will we use a social network? What's so exciting about it? Um, what can it do? So of course, the main thing is that you can stay connected with people, with your friends, your family, um, and you'll be able to talk with them, send videos, things like that. So there are more than just sending emails, for example, it's um, sharing what you had for breakfast, if you're that kind of user, <laughs> um, or sharing a life event, like um, photos from your wedding or something like that. Um, you can meet other people with similar interests. So things like Facebook aren't necessarily conducive for meeting new people necessarily. They're usually people within your social group already, um, or friends of friends and that sort of thing. Um, things like Instagram actually are brilliant for meeting other people with similar interests because what they, I'll explain Instagram further, um, but it's not about, it's not always about the person, but it's more about the content that they share, the pictures they like, the art they've made and things like that. Um, and of course, on a social network, you can share your experiences with other people. Uh, a cute thing that uh, Be Connected noted was that you can share um, your experiences and have them commented on. <laughs> 
Now, I don't know how popular that is. Do, do people want what they're um, showing commented on? Maybe if it's positive, of course. Um, but yeah, we don't want that kind of judgmental <laughs> messaging you can get on uh, social media, especially where you can even be anonymous in some cases. And we'll look at that as well. Um, so you can share anything that can be made digital. This is beyond photos and videos. It can be in text format. Um, it could be a radio play. It could be anything really. Excellent, so let's continue through. So which is right for you? This is where we get to the nitty gritty of what do you want out of your social network? Um, and of course, you're most likely to be signed up to more than just one. Um, if you end up picking just one, Facebook's likely the way to go, just because it's so widespread, prolific, it's just about, it's sort of ingrained in every bit of the internet for the most part, connections to your Facebook, Facebook pages, groups, events, and things like that. Um, but at what level would you like to connect with the internet and share your information? Um, it can be uh, in a casual setting, a professional setting as well, in something like LinkedIn, um, or even on Instagram or Twitter, if you're promoting a, um, your own product, your own work, your own, um, what you offer. So you can make more than just um, your own self sort of published online. You can publish your work as well um, and what you offer. And almost, I'd say, current most companies, groups are going to be promoting themselves online just because that's sort of where people go to first these days when they're looking for more information about that group. They're going to be looking up for reviews, um, products they've made or things they're doing, events they're putting out, and they're going to be researching that way before they pick up the phone and give you a call. Of course, there are many more of us that are still not old fashioned, <laughs> but like the traditional way of talking over the phone. But of course, some places, um, especially online shops and things like that, won't always have that person sitting at a phone. They'll have someone re ready to read an email and things like that. So you just have to be prepared to um, step out of your comfort zone, maybe jump online um, and give them maybe even a uh, instant message as well. Um, so you can connect with people casually, professionally. How would you like to view your information? At what level would you like to experience um, this network? Did you want it in just pictures? Something like Instagram or Pinterest is especially that way. Um, text, which is moving more toward um, Facebook is still very visual. So a little bit of text going on with um, Facebook, but more so I'm thinking Twitter especially is text-based, newsfeed based, -based um, a forum sort of setup. Um, so what do you prefer in that sense? What works with you and how you like to interpret information? And then the last question is what level of privacy are you comfortable with? Um, what are you okay with sharing? Do you want to share every aspect of your life like on Facebook? Um, again, we can look at how we limit that as well and who can see your information. Um, or would you like to just um, share your work in a professional sense? Um, or would you like to kind of keep it sort of um, obscure and not really show much about yourself and maybe show off your interests and what you like, things like Pinterest especially. So I think we'll jump in to a few here. And anyone in the chat, please jump on at any time if I'm being I'm running through too quickly or if there's something you like a little bit more clarification on, please let me know. Otherwise, we'll keep going. Pinterest, woohoo! Okay, Pinterest is a lot of fun. Um, in terms of a social network, the amount of your own um, information and personal identity isn't necessarily put on here. A lot of it is just about, um, it's a photo and video sharing platform. It collects ideas and it sort of builds up inspirational posts and pins and pin boards is what they're calling them. Um, you can make your own pin board, which is essentially just collecting images that other people have put on the website. Um, you can upload your own photos um, and share them through. What you do, um, I'll show you in a second, but you can upload a photo, add tags to the pictures, and then they just get sort of thrown out into the ether of Pinterest where you start searching for keywords and they'll bring up images that they think you'd like. So if we can, let's jump over to Pinterest. I've got one set up here with a new account I've made. Here we go. So let me know if you can't see that, everyone at home. Otherwise, let's have a look at Pinterest. So it's essentially um, a collective pin board setup. Um, it's sort of not that hard to explain, I guess. When you look at it, you can kind of see what's going on here. It's showing up images that you've told them that you're interested in. So when you sign up for an account, it asks for your, again, 
email, password, your name. That's my birthday, though it never, it doesn't, it says that you never need to use it and then they never share it. But I have a feeling it's just they want to know your age group and what kind of images you might be interested in. You can always lie, not a problem. <laughs> you can change your age to whatever you feel is what you like it to be. It doesn't have to be perfectly accurate. With Pinterest, you really don't need to be putting your actual information on there. You just need to have a way to log in, so an email. Um, and a username so people, if they're looking for what you're interested in, they can look up a username. But otherwise, it's fairly um, private. So uh, very high level of privacy here. But what you're doing with Pinterest, the point of Pinterest, if there's ever a point with, so <laughs> with something like social media, the point of this is to build up inspirational pin boards, essentially. So you can skim through each of these pictures and until you come up to one that you like. So I like this cool um, bookshelf setup. Um, Extremely, I like that a lot actually. <laughs> I would love that in my home. Um, and from here, what you do with an image, you save it. So saving it puts it on a pin board that you've created beforehand. So if I press save now, I've created three different pin boards. One's called Enviable Libraries. <laughs> I'm going to put it in there. That seems um, appropriate. That's the category I'd like to put it in. It lets you know it's saved. And then you keep scrolling from there and just keep enjoying your time viewing images. Um, I was having a great time just before skimming through here and just. <laughs> really just soaking it in the photos here are incredible um, a lot are professionally taken photos um, so if we were to click on say I like this one this is extremely beautiful so if you actually click on the image itself instead of just saving it to a pin board it'll bring up um, the larger version of the image as well as the website that it was taken from so a lot of posts are published by those who have a Pinterest account so they've clicked um, I'll show you how to do it in a minute, but you can just sort of upload your own photo and then you tag it with sort of what it represents. So here I would put something like um, library, wooden, baroque, would you say that? I don't know. Um, and then sort of tag it with associated keywords that would help people find the image. Um, so that's what I would kind of look at with that one. But what they do here is they give you a link to the person who's posted it originally. Um, now, it may, may not do that with all of them, considering some are just taken straight from websites, um, but it does give you the link to the actual site where it was taken from, the original page, um, which is nice. I like that in many other places, you don't have to reference where your image came from, um, especially if you've created your own photo or taken your own, taken your own photo, made your own image. Um, but with this, a lot of them can just be taken from anywhere, but they're always gonna be linked back to where it was found. And then you can kind of follow a paper trail, a digital paper trail, of where the image originated from, um, which I think is really nice to get to the real, the heart, the source of the image, especially if you want to reference it somewhere else. You can say this person who I found by tracking back through all several different links um, posted this image on this site originally, it's their photo and things like that. So if we go back to the home, it'll show up just sort of random images that they think Pinterest and their algorithm, um, the algorithm just being um, a system of Honestly, I can't explain the algorithm. <laughs> um, it's just a series of clicks, click, clicks and links that will take you to what they think that you would like. So understanding that when I signed up, they ask you to click five things you are interested in. So I put flowers, nature, indoor gardening, cats and art. Uh, I just thought they'd bring up the prettiest pictures. I haven't seen a cat yet, very disappointed. Um, but um, it sort of gives them an idea of, okay, what sort of things do you like? And the more things you click on and save and like, the more they're going to start um, gearing it toward your interests. Um, so they'll start tweaking. They'll see, oh, she likes flowers. She's been taking, saving a lot of pictures of flowers to our pin boards. Let's show her more flowers. Um, I recently, I was doing a lot of indoor gardeny areas like this one here. Um, and so now it's sort of trained Pinterest to understand what I'm interested in. Now, at this point, you're wonder probably wondering, now, is that um, security smart? Is it... Um, is it taking a lot of my information? So what it's reading essentially, and it's in the privacy policy, it's talking about, um, again, website cookies are on every type of website um, for the most part. It essentially follows what clicks you're viewing, what you're looking at, um, and then sort of remembering that the next time you visit. Um, again, you can turn off cookies um, in some places, but most places do require cookies to work. So something like this, um, where they're going to be suggesting images that they know you like um, or they think you like, that, that way they're going to have to be using cookies. So again, it's that kind of privacy level that you have to be comfortable with. So 
um, them knowing what images you've looked at before. I say them, I mean Pinterest. Pinterest knowing what images you've saved um, and then suggesting new ones. So if you're okay with that, this is for you. Um, so what I'll do, I'll jump to my profile, which is up here in the right hand corner. Most um, websites are going to be popping your personal information, your settings, your um, preferences in the top right hand corner. So I've named myself Emily Library. <laughs> My name is, my last name isn't actually library, but that'd be very cool if it were so. I'd be in the perfect profession. And then from here, you go onto your board. So topics are just what topics you've followed. So I've followed five that they've suggested. Um, and you can pick several more if you'd like to see more um, variety in the posts that they're showing on your homepage. Um, but I'm just keeping it to that because there are quite a few images that cover nature and flowers and things like that. So I'm not gonna run run short on posts and pictures that have been posted. So if I go to boards here, you can have a look at what I've collected. So this is sort of the heart and soul of Pinterest. The idea is that while you can view all these fantastical images, fantastical, um, all these images, you, the idea is that you start collecting them and putting them into sort of inspirational boards. Um, so for me, I've made one that's built up of flowers and gardens because I, like, I love the look of them. And you can kind of see a theme building of uh, pinks and blue sky and things like that. Um, and yeah, you just get a nice view of all these things. What people generally use this for is building up um, DIY ideas. So I know my mum loves to use it for um, crafting ideas around the house. So she'll build up um, a pin board full of like woodworking stuff or um, crafting ideas in general. And then she'll have a look back at them and sort of see what she was interested in a few days ago and what's been good. Um, and that will build up, again, an idea board that you can follow. Um, I'll just flip through a couple of these that I've, I've built up. Um, they're a lot of fun. They're a great time to build up and it feels like it's really curated to your style. So I've made one just called Enviable Libraries. And of course, it's just full of beautiful books all arranged in such fantastical ways. Again, fantastical coming back there. Um, and these are just places I wanna sit in and I wanna read all day. Like, look at them, aren't they incredible? <laughs> Amazing, beautiful. And then I've made one more. I just, I don't need to show you all of these, but look at them. <laughs> beautiful. So this is a fairly easy sign up process. It just needs a, um, a username as well as a password and a email address. And then from there you can get started. Um, I'm, you can follow other pin boards. So I can jump over to following and it'll tell you, um, or it'll give you a list of popular people that have come up so you can follow for example, Lauren Conrad, um, what did she write? I forget, but she's, there's a book in the library with her in it. Um, you can follow all these sort of influential people that have set up their own pin boards and their own inspirational um, setup. And oftentimes it's their own art, their own books, their own recipes that they've popped online for everyone to see. And you can find them here and follow them. So if you've got anyone that you'd like to search for, have a look. So say if we go into food, um, we should find some notable foodies in here and you might recognize some of these here as well. So yeah, once you start following someone, so say if I go back to all, um, if I want to follow, hmm, about Homes to Love Australia, let's follow them. Done. So once you've pressed follow, you can have a look. So your homepage, is, this is where it's separate. Your homepage is what you've sort of selected as topics you like to view. So again, flowers, cats, all that. And then your following is where you're actually viewing what people have posted that you follow, who you follow. Um, so you've got this nice dichotomy, dichotomy, like this two side sort of system. Whereas in most uh, social media setups, you've got, it's just people that you follow is what's made making up the content. Whereas here it's sort of um, what Pinterest thinks you're interested in, and then you can follow people as well. So that's Pinterest. Um, any idea, if anyone has any comments, please pop them in the, chat and you can I can answer any extra questions but otherwise I think we'll keep going so that's Pinterest um, fairly easy to use I'd say um, and not too much uh, brain work required it's really just a gorgeous selection of photos that you can skim through um, and it really is a fun time okay so that's Pinterest let's move on to Instagram okay um, not as it is how do I say this um, Facebook is the most popular social media out there. That's just a fact, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on your side. Um, and then Instagram has been um, acquisitioned by Facebook. 
Um, so this is their other side where Instagram's originally just built up to make um, photo sharing nice and easy and beautiful. Um, and you just skim through all these beautiful pictures. Um, so yeah, photo and video sharing platform, you can follow personal and professional profiles. So you can make your own Instagram, of course. You, I think well, you'll have to, to view other Instagram accounts. Um, so you make your own Instagram. It can be as detailed or as simple as you'd like. So you can pop on a picture of your cat as your profile, which is sort of what I've done. Um, and then you can post your own pictures. From here, it's a matter of who follows you and who are you following. And those are the people that can see your pictures or just the people that are following you. Um, so you can invite your friends to join you or you can find them online or your family members who are overseas, you can find them online and then you can start sharing pictures. Um, it very much ends up looking like sort of a curated um, museum of images really and it can be videos as well um, but they're all in this beautiful tile format so it's a, an extremely uniform design everyone's instagram page will have a variety of images but it's all going to be in the same format so i'd like to show that in just a tick um, of course keep in mind that with instagram it allows direct commenting on your pictures and videos so um, everyone is generally quite nice on the internet it's a large phrase. <laughs> people that will follow you are going to be nice. They're going to be people you know, family members, and people who will follow you because they like what you're posting. Um, but please don't get hung up on the follower count or how many likes you're getting and things like that. Um, there was sort of a ba big backlash a while back with Instagram posting or sh continually showing how many likes have been put on a post. Um, and that's sort of influencing um, how people feel about using Instagram. So if you had a, a large following um, and you got lots of likes, that would sort of influence how you'd feel. You'd feel, oh, that's good. I feel, mm, I like that. Um, but of course, if you had a day where people just weren't on Instagram, you wouldn't get as many likes. And then people were getting upset about this. And it was a whole thing. And there'd be competition between different accounts. And it became very dramatic. Um, so Instagram decided just to take off. It just says, um, it'll say, this person liked it and this person and some other people. Um, instead of giving you the number value, because really a, a post isn't as good as how many likes it has. <laughs> Just a beautiful image, regardless of how many likes it has. So it's become a bit more um, sort of a nicer place to be for the most part. It includes things like, um, so you can view images in your profile. You can put, or it's actually called, what is it called? Instagram page, Insta profile. Um, you can put links to other places. So if you're a business, you can put a link to your online shop or videos that you've made and things like that. Um, but at the very top bar, which you can actually see here on this image, they've also got stories. So stories, are they last for 24 hours. They can be just images that you share or videos. Um, and that just keeps the social aspect. It heightens it even more. It goes, this is what is the latest. Um, this is what you're missing out on if you don't look at your phone within the 24 hours. Um, so love it or hate it, Instagram is um, extremely popular, but um, yeah, how good is it for your mental health? That's another question. But if you're just using it casually, if you're sharing it with friends and family, I'd say it's quite fun. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's well noted by people who use it professionally um, and how, who promote their art, their work, their company. Um, that's where they start getting into um, views and likes and things like that um, and becoming more obsessed with that sort of thing. Um, but if you're using it on a social level, personal level, it's not going to be as intense as that. So I don't want to scare you away from Instagram, but I do want to warn you against that sort of thing. So let's have a look at a, an account that I've made just recently. So again, I've named myself Emily Library, of course, <laughs> the ideal name. Um, but of course, when viewing it on your desktop it's a lot different than your phone so it's definitely designed for phone use for mobile phone um, swiping through scrolling and things like that so here it's telling me please get the app to share pictures um, but I can view posts so what I'll do I'll follow a artist that I like what was their name actually I'll go to my following I picked her up today just so I could show you guys this is a beautiful French illustrator so if you have a look we can have a quick view of what the overview of what Instagram looks like. So it's this tile-based format where the actual images are laid out in little squares. So three by three or three by however big your screen is. 
and you can post your art and pictures. Of course, it's more than just art. I just follow it for art um, people, of course. You can follow it for health tips, um, recipes, art, crafting, any sort of thing. So there are a lot of um, celebrities on Instagram. You can follow them if you want to keep up to date with the Kardashians or something like that. Um, but I personally like to keep up to date with artists to my friends for the most part. So here you can get, again, this is sort of the um, notorious number system where it shows how many posts you've got, that's okay. How many followers you have, that's because we'll start getting obsessive. And how many people they're following, that's not necessarily what we're interested in. Um, this person has given us their full name. They've listed themselves as a business, which you can do. Um, it'll be just blank if it's a personal account, but if you signed up with Instagram and selected I'm a business, um, you get some extra um, extra programming aspects that you can access. And even you can even pay Instagram to promote your posts, um, which is a bit, ooh, how do you feel about that? I'd love to hear it. But um, yeah, you can give yourself a little bit of extra information and then links to other sites that you have. This person's posted beautiful paintings that they've worked on and you can also view stories I'll just see if I can view it on a desktop which is what I'm working on currently yeah there you go so they've posted stories and they're showing their work ethic and how they're building up their art and what they're using um, and these are just what we call stories so they're just short little I think we can I think each little section of a story is about 30 seconds or so or, or less even um, and that can just keep people up to date with what they're doing, what they're viewing, um, and what in their life that they like to share. So it's a lot of fun. Um, but again, please don't get hung up on things like follow accounts and how many likes your post gets. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of people that have sort of said that it's not been good for them and that they've had to take breaks from Instagram and things like that. So um, if you're doing it socially and just for fun, I'd say that's okay. But please don't ever worry about how popular you are on Instagram. It's just, it's just a measure of, well, I don't know what it's a measure of. <laughs> All right, let's jump back in to, oh, I've jumped on further. Beautiful, excellent, back on our slideshow. So that was Instagram, um, a lot of fun sharing photos and don't worry about the follow account, of course. <laughs> All right, let's continue through. I think it was Twitter, here we go. So Twitter, um, personally, I had a long, it took me a long time to get onto Twitter and thinking that it was something worthwhile and worth checking out. Um, but it's sort of, I'd say it's the sort of beating heart of direct news and instant um, updates on things and things like that. So um, Twitter is mostly known for just sharing news and updates. It's a discussion platform with um, forum threads and things like that where our comment will come underneath the box and underneath and then when you start sharing it around it'll link back to the original post and things like that um, so it can be quite daunting to look at I mean what I've got here is sort of simplified um, but when you're looking at it there's all these extra threads and all these hashtags um, all these trend words that pick up um, sort of give your post context and a theme of a greater um, trend that's happening so whilst we'll talk about hashtags when we jump over to Twitter um, yeah, it's really sort of the, the place that I would think to go if I want instant news. Um, uh, the, yeah, it promotes mostly links to other websites for the most part. It's not a place that you want to view the media on necessarily. So people will share what links they've got, images, videos, um, through just a link on Twitter and say, hey, check this out, this is cool. Um, and then you'll travel off to a different website. It's really not, um, I mean, it's great for viewing text, but not great for viewing videos, for example. So it's completely different from Pinterest or Instagram. Um, it's definitely a text-based system where you're reading and catching up with what people are talking about. Um, you can follow personal and professional accounts again. So it's not just um, you know, famous people, it's companies, it's the city of Marion. We've got our own Twitter on there um, and things like that. And I forgot to mention, we have an Instagram as well, city of Marion libraries. Thank you. <laughs> so keep an eye out for that if you're interested. Um, again, it's a forum thread design, so it can be quite daunting to look at at first. So let me jump over to Twitter here on my other side um, and we'll have a look at what I've got set up at least. So um, again, Emily Library here, that's my name. Um, and I posted 49 minutes ago um, a little slide of my um, 
this presentation. Um, no one's following me, of course, so no one's going to be able to see that until um, someone were to follow me. Um, so maybe follow me. You can find me on Twitter now if you want. Totally up to you. Um, and you get suggestions. So when you're viewing Twitter, again, all of these can be optimized for your mobile phone. Um, something like Instagram is made for just the mobile. Um, you can use it on desktop, but it's not optimized for that. It's not going to work as well. And it won't let you post things, for example. Um, but Twitter can be used as a desktop app or you can view it on your phone. So what I've got here, um, we've got, let's, where do we even start? Um, like all uh, social media pages, you have a search bar, so you can search for people. Um, I've searched for a few. So say if we want to search up City of Marion, it'll take us over to the City of Marion page. Um, we've got a recent video as of two hours ago, which I was watching that features some of our library people as well. Um, but it's a lovely video, you should check it out. Um, so what we're looking at when we're jumping onto a, a Twitter page or a Twitter feed, you can check out, um, if you want to click follow, you can click here. I'm already following, of course. Um, you can, I guess that's direct message. Hmm. I don't know if you do that on Twitter. There you go. Um, but you'll be following down in this sort of streamlined format. Again, you're scrolling through and traveling down. That's usually like, you know, um, chronologically most up to date posts at the top and the um, oldest posts will be all the way at the bottom. So you can scroll through. The thing about Twitter, which is, which can be kind of confusing is that even though you're on this person's home page, so city of Marion's actual page, um, you can tweet out and share posts from different sites. So, for example, we've got City of Marion here. It says City of Marion retweeted and it's an SA Health post. So that's where stuff starts getting confusing. goes, hold on, I was on the City of Marion Libraries page. Why is SA Health popping up? But of course, that's what City of Marion has shared. So it comes up on their own page. Every now and then you'll find line breaks where we'll talk about who to follow and other suggested sites. Um, so a whole, whole bunch of different um, councils nearby that we've got coming up, of course, and then we'll get their latest news. So again, most of these are going to be including links because Twitter has a very limited amount of characters you can put in a post. So the amount of words you can write down in each post is extremely limited. I forget the words. Is it 250 words? That might be too many. 150? <laughs> it might be 250 characters, which builds up sort of a... Um, a small paragraph for the most part. So you can have a look at each of these. They're very brief. Um, they come up with, you'll see the name of the author, whoever posted it first, their Twitter handle. So it'll be at the at symbol. And at any point when making your own post, you can at someone, meaning they will get a notification saying, this person is talking about you. And it also gives the viewer who's looking at your post um, the access to click right on that link. It'll just be an at link. Um, and it'll take them to their Twitter page. Um, the other thing to look out for is hashtags. Now, I don't know if we've got any present. They'll come up in blue. So much like Cleanaway Australia here is mentioned, um, there'll be a hashtag version of that. You know what? I've made one already. Let's go to my page. So I'll jump back to Twitter home. I'll just click on Emily Library. That's me. So we'll go over here. Here we go getting ready to host another Be Connected webinar. That's me. So here I've added a hashtag with the Be Connected term. Um, so again, it's just that little hash symbol. So I can make one right now. Let's do that. Just as an example, so you can get the idea. Here we go, pen a new tweet, which is a cute little feather. And I'll say, <laughs> currently <laughs> presenting. Very excited about it. And then we go a hashtag and we can say, yeah, be connected. There we go. Currently presenting be connected. Tweet. Let's see how many characters I can put. What does it say? The gibberish up some characters. Well, as you type, for example, I'm just typing GR, 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 you can see down here the um, little circle filling up, which is representing how many characters you have left. So here I've used a quarter of my character usage. Um, so this is just to keep. Twitter in sort of a, um, a uniform format where it's always going to be just a brief amount of text, a link, probably um, an image, maybe someone shared or a video, and that'll be it. This way, um, your feed, your Twitter feed is going to look less cluttered um, and everything's going to look uniform and it's going to look very Twitter. <laughs> so it's got that Twitter look. So I've posted my tweet. It's come up with my name, 
my Twitter handle, which is Emily Library One. Um, and then it's also given me the time. So I posted that just now. If anyone was following me, <laughs> it would pop up on their feed and say, Emily, just posted this. Aren't you so excited? <laughs> there you go. Beautiful. So if anyone has any more questions about Twitter, I might jump into a few of the trends. So trending information can be quite fun. So this is the home symbol, which is, of course, a little bird box, a little birdhouse, which I think is so cute. Um, but if we have a look at the hashtag symbol, it should bring up current trends. So say we've got a lot of coronavirus related information, of course. Um, but say if we jump into trending, it should be hashtags. Here we go. So this is what people are talking about. For some reason, Adele is tweeting. <laughs> Don't know what she's doing, but she's being tweeted at. Um, and this will kind of give you an idea of what's popular, what's happening and what's going on right now. So this Twitter is definitely for the sort of person that loves being up to date, loves knowing what's in first, what people are posting. So you can follow news sites, um, companies you love, um, you can follow SA Health, that's a great idea. Um, and you'll get updates, up to date updates, I should say, um, on current information, current trends and what's happening in the world. Um, again, keep in mind all of, all of this with a grain of salt because we don't wanna take in too much social media all at once. Um, looking at what's now, what's hip, what's go, 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 can be quite stressful. Um, so I like to limit the amount of social media use I have per day, only jumping on you know, Instagram, Facebook, maybe an hour a day at the most, um, and then sort of letting it go for the rest of the day. But if you like to be up to date, Twitter is a good place to start. Um, and if you don't mind the format, for some people it can be quite um, daunting to see a lot of that text, a lot of the hashtags and um, account names and things like that um, but it'll give you over time you might get used to it but of course if it's not for you please don't push yourself to put, go through that one okay all righty let's jump back to my powerpoint slide here we go so that was twitter let's get into the biggest one facebook okay um i would say almost okay again that's far too big <laughs> a lot of people have facebook let's just say that um, and we've got a little stat at the bottom here, over 2 billion monthly users on Facebook. Um, 2 billion each month are using Facebook. So I think that was a stat from a couple of years ago as well. I'd like to know the latest stat as well. Um, so biggest network, biggest social network, it's a place to share your personal information and life updates. Um, again, there are companies listed on Facebook. For example, Facebook is listed on Facebook. Um, their own company but you can also find the city of marion libraries which i'll look up in a second for you um, and they'll be able to post their information keep you up to date um, but it was made um, originally uh, we most of us know the story college students making a i think it was a dating network actually but it's become a social network where you share your information your personal life story um, and you can be as broad and as private as you'd like. So you can post, um, they always ask for, okay, what's your name? Um, Facebook's pretty particular about making sure they're getting your real name. Um, although I've made an account recently, a, a new one, and I didn't put my real name <laughs> and it was okay. So if you're not comfortable with using your first and last name, people, it's, it's sort of a trend at the moment to pick your first name and then put your middle name. That way only people, friends you know, friends of friends that have told them about you are going to be able to look you up and find you. Um, it's a huge network and a lot of people are going to have your name. So the only way people can find you is through friends of friends. Um, of course, they can have a search on the Facebook search bar, which you can see up here. Um, you can search through there and it'll take you to a whole list of pictures of people um, who may or may not be the person you're looking for. Um, so unless someone is sort of very keen on finding you or if you've told them your name, they're going to have a hard time finding you otherwise. Um, it's a place to share photos, videos and text posts. So they're just called Facebook posts. Um, they share any kind of information, essentially anything that can be digitized can be put onto Facebook. Um, and again, it's the largest social media platform. So with that all said, let's jump onto my Facebook that I've made recently. <laughs> yeah, and it's all these all of this Emily new stuff. So now I didn't get Emily Library this time. I got Emily at Hallett Cove. It's my whole name apparently. <laughs> so this is what you would see if you were looking up Emily at Hallett Cove, if you were looking for me. 
Um, what I've done here is I've set up with a fake image. I know it looks very convincing. It looks just like me. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's me. <laughs> Little upset orange kitten, all fluffy. Um, it comes up with your name and then of course it comes up with some general information. So here it's popped down customer service officer at the city of Marion, living in Adelaide. Um, and that's all about that I've given. That's all I've let them know. Um, you're welcome to give as much or as little information as you like. Please be very careful with how much you share. Um, you can always add more, but it's harder to get rid of the information once it's out there. Um, of course, the privacy settings on Facebook have become quite advanced. Um, they have, they've had a few scandals in the past where information was leaked or certain parties were given more precedence over other posts and it became sort of a bias thing. Um, if you remember that in the news. Um, but what we'll do, if we'd like to change our settings, protect ourselves as much as we want on Facebook or limit the amount that other people can view of us, jump into the right-hand corner. Once again, right-hand corner has got all your general information. Um, so if I click Emily here, it takes me to my, my own page, my own um, Facebook profile. But I'm gonna click this little drop-down arrow. Now again, I have no friends currently. <laughs> I haven't added any friends I know, so it's a little empty up here. Um, otherwise, that might be lining up with little notification badges and things like that, but not today. Uh, <laughs> we're going to drop down this arrow here and we go into settings. So once you've signed up, made a profile, or if you've got a current profile, please do get into um, your settings and we're going to start looking at your privacy settings and we're going to adjust them. So a lot of things will remain quite open if you've not gone in yourself and said, no, I don't want to share that. I only want to share this with friends of friends and not um, everyone on the web website and when he looks things up. Um, so I do recommend that you jump onto your privacy settings and update them. I think Facebook these days will have every now and then will pop up, say, please update your privacy settings. It's been a while or something like that. Um, so activity and your how people can find you especially. That's something you're wanting to um, close off or make your own. So what I'll do, I'll show you how it's pretty simple. So again, you click that down arrow, go into settings, jump down to this privacy tab on the left-hand side, and then we're gonna start editing on this way. So who can send me friend requests? I would like just friends of friends. There we go. Two options, everyone or friends of friends. Everyone means any user, any country, any language can type your name in and find you eventually. Um, they may not get you on the first try because there are a lot of people in the world. Um, for example, let's have a look for a John Smith, eh? <laughs> okay, well, I guess it goes into companies first. I'll look for a John Smith later on. Um, but as you can imagine, there are many, many, many John Smiths in the world and you're not gonna find the one you're looking for right away. You're gonna need extra helps Extra help, extra help, extra links, friends of friends who are friends with them and things like that. So who can see my friend list? Again, friend list just shows who you've become friends with. So it can be anything from everyone all the way down to just myself. So any, any option you get to say only me is totally fine to do. I would recommend it unless you'd like your friends to see it, of course, in which case, so who can look you up using the email address? You can say friends. I've given my friends my email address and if I they put it into the search bar, they'll be able to find my profile. So again, phone number I provided, let's do only me, don't for calling me. Um, and do you want search engines outside of Facebook to link your profile? Meaning that if someone were to type in into Google, for example, um, Emily at Hallett Cove, Facebook profile, go, um, they'd most likely find it because you've clicked, yes, I'd like search engines to find my profile. This is great if you're a, larger company that would love this sort of thing. So for example, um, City of Marion Libraries, we're gonna have that option as yes, because we want people to find us. We want them to find our Facebook and see what we've got going on. Um, but of course, if you're a personal profile, your own account, so Emily at Hallett Cove, you don't want people to find you that way. So I'm gonna select no. Oops. This turns on, turn off, there we go, there we go. Oop, now it's a no. So you don't have to press a final save button here as you go, it's saving your information. So that'll be just fine. Excellent, so I'll jump back to me. Um, so every time you click here, it takes you back to your own profile and you can see what you've posted. 
So creating a post is done in this section here. You can add a photo, a video, so say, I think I've already got one. And maybe can I even drag a picture over? Let's do that. I've got my slideshow here, picture that I've taken before. I've added a photo. I'll say, currently, current, hosting a be connected webinar. There we go. Smiley face. So um, you can post who you're with. So that can tag other friends that you've got. I can I won't put the Sumo in libraries. I don't want them to be bothered with this post, but <laughs> and you can post it to your news feed. So you can tag friends, you can add a feeling, which just means that on your post it'll add a currently hosting be connected webinar feeling something. So I'm gonna say I'm feeling fantastic. Let's do fantastic. There you go. Little tab feeling fantastic. Totally optional, just a cute little extra you can do. From here, when you're creating a post, you select who you'd like to share it with. So this can be public, so it can be anyone on or off Facebook. So for example, um, the City of Marion Library's web uh, Facebook page is going to do everyone because you want everyone who even if they don't have an account on Facebook, we want them to view our stuff. We want them to see what events we've got on, what pictures we're posting. Um, but as a public, sorry, a private user, um, a, just a regular profile, you leave it on friends or you can even extend it to friends of friends. Um, public, again, if you're very comfortable with anyone in the world seeing it, you can do it that way. Um, but I'm just gonna put friends. So people that I've agreed to say, would they like to be my friend? And I've gone, yes, I've confirmed their friend request and that way, we've become neutral friends. So that's okay with me, we're posting that one. And that's what that looks like. So it gives you the time at which it was posted. So just now, so a few minutes later, it's gonna say five minutes ago. Um, it'll say who's seeing it and you can adjust that at any point as well. So if you're suddenly uncomfortable with one person seeing this, you can actually click this and select that one person. So say it's, um, I don't know, a friend that's no longer a friend, um, but you want them, as a friend still, but you don't want them to know that you're hosting a webinar, you can say that person won't be able to see this post, for example. Um, so you can change that at any time, even after you've posted it. And of course, if you're uncomfortable with the post or it's no longer relevant, just click these three little dots and you can do all these extra things, including delete. So you can have it fully gone. So just know that you can post and delete what you've posted as well. So don't worry about <laughs> um, permanency. So do be careful considering that um, anyone with access to a computer can take, can download what you save. So I can easily click and drag this picture off. Okay, well, I can dra drag the link to the image off as you can see here, um, or you could screenshot it or things like that. So be very mindful of what you're posting. Um, while you can delete things, um, there is the general rule that nothing you post on the internet is ever really gone. So keep that in mind. Um, friends as well as yourself can comment. I'll say, this is cool. And we'll just say post. And now there's an extra quote, little comment added. I have a question from Renya. Let's answer this live. Can you put photos you have on Pinterest onto your Facebook page? Ooh, I like that idea. I'm sure there's a share button. Let's jump over to Pinterest and say, go to my account and we'll have a look at my boards again. And let's say I want to share this board. So I'm just looking for a share button. Okay, this button generally means send it off elsewhere. So let's click that one. Aha, send this board. Let's send it to Facebook. Here we go. Pinterest will receive. So this is just saying, are you okay with Pinterest knowing your information? And I'm already logged onto um, Facebook on another tab. So of course it knows which account I'm logged into. Um, so I'll say, yep, continue with Emily. That's cool, that's me. And now it's opening a Facebook page, ooh, within Pinterest. That's quite interesting. Let's have a look, okay. See if it does it right away. Otherwise, uh, let's see if it will show me without, I can only see so much of this. Um, you can share it with WhatsApp. Oh, there we go. So this is how you would format your Pinterest. So I'll say, look at my pins. <laughs> there we go. I could put on my newsfeed, which is again, um, the home page of your Facebook, um, as well as your, your own profile page. Um, so Pinterest.com, share to newsfeed or story. You can even share it to a friend's timeline. You can send it to a friend. I'll just leave it to my um, my own news feed, post to Facebook. Okay, so that seems to be the only confirmation you get here. But then if we jump over, hopefully I'll just say, 
you logged into Pinterest, cool. So this is a little security notification. You can tell by the little shield here, it's saying, are you sure you've um, I've jumped onto Pinterest here? Yeah, that's fine, I'm gonna leave that alone. Just see if this loads. If it doesn't do it right away, I'm just gonna refresh by clicking my own face. <laughs> there we go, look at my pins. It'll let you know again, what time you posted it, as well as the app you posted it from. So application program um, website. So from here, it just has a link, which isn't you know as um, pretty as it could have been. I would have loved to have seen so, some of those pictures, um, but this is a way to share your pins, brilliant. Cool, takes you right to your profile and lets you have a look at all those lovely flowers that you've liked. Excellent, cool, all right. I hope that answered your question, Renya. Thank you for that one. Okay, so that's the general view of your own profile. Now, if I were to jump to the actual Facebook home, it's gonna show us the newsfeed. Okay, lovely little note from Facebook themselves. Um, so here is sort of the front page of your Facebook. Um, I say your Facebook because everyone's account is gonna look different. It's gonna be built up of people that you're friends with, um, accounts that you follow. So for example, I'm following the City of Marion Library Service. I'll see if it comes up. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> Bit of an empty news feed today. Hmm. Again, I guess I'm not sharing things with the City of Marion. Let's jump over to the City of Marion Libraries and see what they look like <laughs> in comparison. Okay, so maybe there hasn't been a post recent. Oh, it was two hours ago. Hmm. That would have been Paula. Thanks, Paula. <laughs> Okay, well, let's talk about other people's pages, especially business pages. So when viewing something like a profile, it's gonna be fairly simplified and just made up of what they've got going on. So they're in pictures, they're in friend lists, things like that. Um, but if we go back to City of Marion Libraries, it's gonna be made up of events, um, posts. We've got an email newsletter link here, photos, videos, extra community information. Um, they've even, we've even got set up a great little video rather than just a regular um, photo that you normally set up on your own profile you can set up videos now so it's got a whole lot going on and there's so much to view it shows you where to find the Hallett Cove library that's us here um, and where to find more information takes you to all these other links takes you to the council website and things like that um, the main thing I would want to point out other than just scrolling through the timeline as you see it here I'm calling it a timeline yeah I'm I'd say that still works, it's still called a timeline. Um, on the left-hand panel here, you've got all your associated links within Facebook. So if I were to jump onto an about page, it should give us more information about the library, unless we haven't got an about page. There we go. So a way to contact us, so that's a direct message link. So that's Messenger, um, give us a phone call. And again, all of our links to our related information. So our own website page, email if you wanna contact us, and then a brief little synopsis, synopsis, a little summary of what we are, what we do. Um, posts just per, um, just shows you what we've posted, not things we've shared, um, not things that we've linked from other places. It's just posts that we've made. Um, events is what I want to point out um, distinctly because I should have an event here. Here we go. We connected webinar, socializing, socializing online. That's what we're watching right now. Very cool. Um, and this will give you upcoming events. So any sort of program-based um, Facebook page you can find is gonna have an upcoming events list. So keep that in mind. Um, and of course you can say that you're interested in something um, and that'll post to the actual page that your sponsors, visitors, or hosts and friends. Um, just saying, I'm interested in this and maybe my friends would be interested too and they'd find it if I had any friends. <laughs> and of course there's even more to view. So please jump on to your favorite web page that you have favorite Facebook profile, Facebook account, um, and really give a, a real thorough look into them and have to see what they've got going on and what's exciting. Okay, I'll jump back to my previous screen. I think we've had a whole heap full of Facebook. Um, unless people have extra questions about Facebook, I will jump back to our PowerPoint slide. And I'll let you know where to contact us. So I've forgotten to put in my little <laughs> question slide. But if anyone has any questions, please pop them in the chat now or in the question and answer boxes. Otherwise, I'll go through ways to contact us. So we've gone through all of our social media and what social media is, social networks. Let's jump into what we have. So I've shown you our City of Marion Facebook page, City of Marion Libraries, I should say. 
Um, again, totally fully up to date. Paula's on that one all over it. She's doing so well and it looks beautiful, of course. It's really nicely laid out. Um, and that's where you'll find everything. Most of our um, links on something like Instagram, it's gonna ask you to jump onto our Facebook to book into things anyway. You wanna find an event. Um, so it really is like the main hub of what we've got going on. Otherwise, if you like Instagram, we've got a beautiful Instagram account as well, as you've seen. Um, you can check out our What's On page on the City of Marion Council website. You just go through um, venues, libraries, What's On. It's not actually done this way, but you go venues, libraries, What's On, and you can find things like Be Connected. Um, you can find Tracy's um, Library Through the Lens, Bricks and Bites by Ben and Emma. Um, all these extra events that we've got going on currently while we can't be open and seeing people. Um, and of course, you can subscribe to our library loop newsletter. It comes out monthly, so we're not going to flood your inbox with too much. It will just, just bring up the most exciting events that we've got going on and what we want you to hear about. And of course, if you can't get online, please jump on to the phone. <laughs> Give us a call on 8375 75, sorry, 7. Maybe start that one. It's right here. I could just read it out. I'm just trying to memorize it. Eight three seven five six seven five five. There we go. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, and I think we are done for the day. Thank you everyone for joining me. Thank you, Rania, for your question there. It's been a lovely time once again. Um, I hope you all enjoy the little touch of warm weather we've got before it starts being all cold and miserable again. Although it depends if you like that sort of thing as well. Um, Okay, so everyone enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye.